Welcome to the String Shop again for what will be the last video on how to build the fiddle. We've come a long way since we had a rough sawn spruce beam and an old cherry board. In the last video we applied our varnish and talked about different techniques to finish your instrument. Well in this video we finally get to set her up and hear her sing. Well, here we are. All the varnish is done on our fiddle. There's a total of three coats of varnish, which seems to be more than sufficient. I was watching a video online on Gliga violins, and I used to own one. They claim 11 coats of varnish. That seems excessive. Anyway, I just glued on my fingerboard and when you do yours, it pays to have the wood nice and warm and then line it up very carefully so that it doesn't get askew. Well, the next step, once this sets up, will be to clean out the peg holes and start setting this baby up. I have everything laid out to start setting up the fiddle. I'm going to carve the bridge first. One of the tools I'm going to be using is this neat little gadget, which is well worth the 10 bucks. There are like a million videos on YouTube on how to carve a fiddle or violin bridge. So I am not going to make another one to add to the list, but I will give you some tips that I hope you find helpful. One, for example, is what do you do first? Well, the first step should be to shape these feet so this bridge will sit down like it's supposed to. Then the second step is how do we find the top edge? Well, once you've shaped your feet, I use rubber bands to hold it in position. This distance is important. Get that right. Take your number two pencil, stick it on your fingerboard, project it out, and then scribe the arc that matches your fingerboard. This will be the baseline for the shape of the top of your bridge. Now the baseline from your pencil mark is about 3.5 to 3.75 millimeters up from the fingerboard. Because my E string will be a little bit lower than that, I make a mark, and my G string will be up about four and a half millimeters. I make a little mark above my baseline, and then noting which side is the E string, which side is the G string, I will apply my template and trace out the final shape. I've seen fellows get to this stage in the process and they come to the bridge and they go, ah, oh, what the heck, I'll just take a blank and fit the feet. Don't do that. This is the most technologically advanced piece of your fiddle. The shape of the bridge from the side view forms certain important angles the back of the bridge sits at 90 degrees to the top of the violin or fiddle. The front angle divides the angle in the string between the fingerboard side and the tailpiece side. These pretty little cutouts aren't just for looks. The bridge acts as a sound filter. The top of the bridge has mass and it vibrates back and forth. The amount of mass determines the vibration frequency, but that's coupled to the springiness of this waist. Carving this too skinny or leaving it too fat affects the way the top of the bridge can rock back and forth and filter the vibrations that come from our strings. And there's a ton more going on inside this little bridge 
and you can spend endless hours reading about it. It's quite interesting. But for now, I would encourage you to pay attention to the details and carve your bridge accurately to the specs that you'll find in your book or your plans. The next step is to hollow out those eyes a little bit. And I use a pencil to give myself an idea of where I'm going and to track the thickness of my waist. This waist is going to be a hair under 15 millimeters thick this way. In no case should it ever be narrower than 13 millimeters and personally I wouldn't go below 14. That's just me. You do as you like but this will affect the sound of your fiddle quite a bit. Now it's time to set up the tailpiece. Generally speaking, we want the tail gut as short as possible without having the tailpiece sit on the saddle because we're shooting for as much after length here as possible. Now that you have this area all set, it's time to clean the varnish out of your peg holes. And when you go in with your reamer, be very gentle so as not to actually ream the holes any larger. Then you're going to want to mark and drill little holes, 16th of an inch, for your strings to go in. And the last thing we need to do is set up a sound post. The sound post is simply a spruce dowel, often cut from the same wood as your base bar or your top, five and a half to six millimeters in diameter, and it will end up somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a quarter inches long. His job is to connect the top with the back and act as a fulcrum underneath one of the feet for the bridge. It becomes a pivot point as the base bar acts as a kind of spring to support the rocking action of our bridge. Now you'll notice the top and the bottom of the sound post must be cut at a slight angle. Generally the bottom of your sound post will have a slightly shallower angle than the top of the sound post due to the nature of how we carved the top and back plate. The preliminary or starting place to position our sound post will be almost centered behind the foot of the bridge and it will be spaced behind the bridge about the thickness of the top. You know once upon a time I thought you had to order yourself a sound post with some magical piece of wood. But really, you just make yourself a sound post, cut or split off a piece of a scrap piece of spruce that you used for your top or your base bar. It should have a nice tight grain and then just whittle it down close to the dimensions and use your drill as a lathe. It's always good to have a reason to do a little more whittling and it's a fun little quick project. I'll just get it close. You don't have to make it perfectly round or anything. And then check it with your caliper. So I'm at seven. Let's give this a try. I'm just going to chuck one end of this in the cordless drill. Just clamp something pointy to your bench. I'm using my old compass. A nail will work just fine. This gives you a nice support for your mini lathe. Take your coarsest file. Make sure you're going the right direction. And just start working the wood. And when you get close enough, I use 80 grit sandpaper.
In a matter of minutes, you have a nice sound post. Now that you have your sound post all set, it's time for our very last tool alert. You really do need a tool to set and adjust your sound post like this one. This neat sound post setter is made by a fellow in Florida. It's spring loaded and once you get your sound post in position, this snaps right off. And this is that little handy gadget I showed you. You can live without it, but it's nice to have if you're doing more than one fiddle. Once you've cut your little sound post to size, you want to make sure that the grain in the sound post goes perpendicular to the grain on your top. I make a little corresponding mark on mine so that I can see which way the grain is going and if this falls down I remember which end is the bottom. While your end pin hole is available you can sight in there and make sure your sound post is nice and vertical and in the correct position especially if you put those marks in there like I did when you were building. Another super important tool is this one a business card or index card with a slice in it. This is how it works. We can insert it in the F hole and measure how far behind the bridge our sound post is as well as measuring how far in the sound post is in relation to the bridge foot. This is where my sound post is in relation to my bridge foot and I feel this is optimum. And if you look down here inside my F-hole, you can see how helpful those little marks are that I made when I was assembling the fiddle. Use your template to mark and file your string slots in your nut. Note the slight inward angle of the two outboard strings as the slot angles slightly in towards the center of the peg box. Make sure you don't file these too deep and you want to use a small round file to prevent binding in the slot. The final setup of your fiddle is of primary importance. You want to get this right. It is going to take hours to get it set up. So give yourself the time. For a professional setup, up here by the nut, you want the thickness of a robust business card between the strings and the fingerboard. Down here at this end, on my G string, I'm going to leave four millimeters of space. Some people like four and a half, or maybe a little bit more. Your fiddle, put it where you want it. On the E string, I'm shooting for three millimeters. That's how I like it. Now I know someone's gonna ask me, what am I putting on here for strings? Well, I think dominance have been done to death and if you buy a set for 50 or $60, you have to replace the E string because it's weird. Parastro tonicas used to be the standard they have reformulated. They have a wonderful, in my opinion, a wonderful E string. And you know what? I'm a cheapskate. I can get a set of these for 25 bucks, maybe 26 bucks online. And I'll buy two or three sets at a time so I have extras. Give them a try. See if you like them. They won't break the bank. I am all done, at least for now, with the preliminary setup of the cherry fiddle. You'll notice the tail gut has started to stretch out, which is normal. So I'm going to get in there and readjust it. But the moment we've been waiting for has arrived. Well, I brought the fiddle with me to church. 
Better acoustics. it a lot. I sure hope you do too. Well that brings How to Build a Fiddle finally to a close. It's kind of sad because this project has consumed me pretty much for the past seven or eight weeks. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all of you who have written to me with words of encouragement and saying thanks and suggestions. It has meant so much and has made it all worthwhile. Look down below, I'm going to include some links to the best video that I think on YouTube for how to carve a bridge, a great video on positioning your sound post, and one of you fellas that I've met through this series has started his own series on carving his own fiddle. It's called the Worktop Fiddle. I want to encourage you to check the link Go over and subscribe to him, and let's all follow along. I hope some of you share your projects as well. I'm going to leave you with a few photographs of the cherry fiddle. Goodbye for now. I hope to catch you again later. <laughs>